isn't it? I've s well, have you not seen it? No, I've been waiting. Well, it's probably better to watch on DVD than it is in the cinema where you can't leave, switch it off, fast forward, or eat right. proper food. I'm, look I'm looking forward to the, all the... Because oh, I, I like those things, man. I like seeing people squirm and try and take seriously some huge pile of dog muck they've created. Did you know one of the directors, one of the Wachowski brothers, is, is a transvestite? Dresses as a woman. Uh, and, and he really wanted to, and he calls himself Jenny or something, and he really wanted to be credited as, like, Jenny Wachowski on the film, but the other brother had to really struggle to... This is all a sort of, um, uh, it's a bit of a sort of street myth. Not an urban myth, a street myth. I think it's true, though. I think it's true as uh, well. Maybe even, uh, maybe even a, um, transsexual, I think. I tell you what I saw this week, Underworld. How was that? Ah, oh. Kate Beckinsale, Kate oh. and Kachin. Oh, ah, oh, and it made the Matrix look, it was so derivative of the Matrix, made the Matrix look like, um, look like Citizen Kane. Oh, Citizen yes, Kane. Yes, the best film ever made. Best film ever made, yeah. Uh, Underworld is reprehensible rubbish. Well, I wouldn't have It's not the that. XFM film of the month, is it? It's bound to be. Why no, did you, not. why did you go and see that, man? <laughs> bored. You must have been bored. <clears throat> so are you going to be watching Air America? Uh, no, I've never seen Air America. Well, don't bother. It's got the dreadful Mel Gibson. <laughs> How on You're earth sounding like your dad. I know, I know. It's more and more like your dad every day. <laughs> it's true. Well, I am his son. I'm what, what are you looking forward to? Come on, we want something to, okay. that, that you're going to be excited. Apart from The Matrix, people who can't get Region 1 DVDs ahead of time, like Fancy Pants Buxton. Well, it's out next week, isn't it? Yeah, but it's not out tonight. What can people watch tonight? Okay, tonight you can watch Married to the Mob. Uh, that's a Jonathan Demi film. That's, that's your pick. Well, I don't know, but... We just want one thing. Come on, bang. Okay, Beck, live at Brixton Academy, 2.55am <laughs> <laughs> on ITV. <laughs> Did, didn't we wait? Did, is that the gig we went to? Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, the, the acoustics were awful when you were there. They might be better on telly, actually. Well, they'd be great on telly. What, what are you I, picking? What am I picking? I don't know. Meet the Apple Gates? Uh, no, well, I'm picking the Fame Academy final. Okay. <laughs> Uh, just because I'm not interested, I was a big fan of Peter, mm. the Stopey indie kid. Stopey? The Stopey indie kid. It's like, is that an Indian race? Uh, yeah. The Stopey no. Indians? The Stopies, <laughs> yeah. Uh, only because he was just a, just, you know, amazing. Yeah. And, uh... Do you not like the young pixie lesbian lady? Um, yeah, I do. I think she's gonna be the British Avril Lavigne. Lavigne. Mm. Anyway, that's pretty much it for us for this week. We could go on and 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 on, but we're being stopped. Come round, say hello, take us for a drink, and we'll go on and on and on. Just, yeah, three o'clock outside XFM in Leicester Square. Yeah, we're not busy. Let's party. Okay, well, listen, thanks a lot for listening, and thanks for emailing us Yeah, thanks for all the emails, especially after we complained that we weren't getting enough. There was a terrific wave of emails, and thank you very much for everybody who sent them in. I read them all. And we'll be with you again this time next week. Have, Have a, a good, good time, yeah. Love you, bye! Bye! That's The Strokes and 12.51, kicking off another fantastic show for Adam and Joe here on XFM. London's 104.9. I'm going to be big this week, Joe. Big. Really? Yeah, huge. In what sense? Just personality-wise. I'm going to sit all over this show. You, you'll be poached by Capital during the show if you carry on talking like that. That's what I'm hoping. You're out foxing Foxy. I'm going to do a Capital link for you right now. Turn if you down your foxiness, Ad. I can't. I will turn it down just after this Capital link. Okay. okay. Here's a capital link for you. Well, it's Saturday afternoon, and what an afternoon it is. People are outside. Here's Enya. Is that a real capital link? No, it's wrong in a couple of respects. The content was correct, but uh, I don't think they'd be playing Enya. They're a bit more groovy than that these mm, days. Mm, mm. But on our show, coming up, we've got uh, Lazy Reviews. We've got a Celebrity Regression. Yeah. We've got Dizzy's in the Dock. Yeah. Quite, yeah. an e quite an easy celebrity regression this week, because is it? people have been complaining that, that it's too hard. Right. Um, and, uh, yeah, Ditty's in the dark. You know what I feel like, Adam? What do you feel like? I feel like being reminded of my favourite BBC One trails. Really? For forthcoming shows. I feel like being reminded of Pop Idol, the last series. Yeah. You know what I need? What? I need to hear Warning Sign by Coldplay oh. to remind me of all those things. Brilliant. Can you help me with that? Yeah, yeah, here we go. Oh, that's better. Coldplay and warning sign. You're listening to Adam and Joe on XFM. Joe, there's a good chance 
we might actually see and touch and molest Chris Martin from Coldplay tomorrow evening. Really? Have you not met Chris? Chrissy Chris Chris? Chrissy Poo Poo Martin? I, I have, but I met him before he was kind of astronomically famous. Mm. Uh, which I would say he is now. Would you quibble with astronomically famous? Yeah, he's astronomically famous. Yeah, he is, isn't he? Yeah. And uh, I met him at uh, a party, and I think it was Edgar Wright's party. Edgar Wright, of course, the director of Shaun of the Dead, which uh, we are going to the premiere of tomorrow evening. And, uh, yeah, I met Chris Martin at, at his party there, and I think I said, despite not being a massive Coldplay fan, I did that thing uh, of just basically licking his bottom because he's famous. And uh, I said something like, uh, oh, you know, I've, I've been obsessed by the first track on Parachutes, which is kind of true, because it is a what brilliant track. What is the first track. track on Parachutes? It's called uh, Don't Panic, and it is right. an amazing song. Is that... Yeah, that's yeah, the one. Yeah. That's yeah. the one. That's a good that version. Is, oh, well, thank you. I mean, it's brilliant. It even comes through when I sing it like that. He should do it like that. Well, that's, that's I mean, really good, you know. Records like that would sell more copies because they'd sell to babies. Yeah, and wouldn't the, they? And they'd sell to adults, and they'd s sell to slightly retarded adults like me. Like, and it would um, be quicker because you wouldn't have to make up any lyrics. It would just be bo ho bo bo bo. That's the Sean uh, Penn "I Am Sam" version of Don't right. Panic." By anyway, Coldplay. sorry. So yeah, well, you could suggest that to uh, Chris if you see him tomorrow night. Yeah. However, would you now go up to someone like Chris Martin? Yeah. You know what? Chris Martin comes up to me. No, he does. Yeah, not. he does. He does. Does he really? He's a very nice fella, and he's not uh, all famous. Famous. He's very nice. Um, but what they're what they're really trying to get is Gwyneth to the premiere tomorrow. Right. That would be the big. You see, Chris exists in the real world, sort of. You know, the top of his head might be in celebrity cloud cuckoo land cloud cuckoo it. land thank yeah. you adam but the rest of his body is very much in the real world but I, but gwyneth is she a space cadet well well she's she? a-list man she's an oscar winner oh, she's she's above a-list yeah what's above a-list i don't know her uh, list or oh, uh, list. Uh, list yeah exactly uh. Um, anyway, where are we going with all of this? I don't know. I'm just excited about the premiere. The Shaun of the Dead premiere. And Shaun of the Dead is very good. It's been getting. It's got a very positive review in in Variety, Has the it? American uh, Film Bible, which suggests it might be a U.S. hit as well. And once again, it's being described as the savior of the British film industry. The British film industry has been dying pretty much since I became aware there was a British film industry when I was aged about six. Yeah. It's just it's just dead. And then every now and then. The corpse sort of twitches with a film like, you know, Room with a View or Chariots of Fire or Shaun of the Dead. Yeah, it's a very appropriate analogy, of course, mm. as well. Mm. The zombie, zombie corpse film. of uh, yeah. the British film industry. So at the premiere tonight, you're going to try and schmooze people, Adam? Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Schmooze. Hmm. I don't know what you mean to get well, ahead. Because you've got a record of stumbling up to celebrities, <laughs> wanting to make friends with them, and then making an arse of Who yourself. Who have I done that with? I don't know. I can't remember the specifics. But many is a time when you've told me long stories about how you've embarrassed yourself in front of a celebrity. Once or twice I've done that. You just did one just now about Chris Martin. Yep. That's true. I didn't embarrass myself, though. I, he was nice, you know, and it was fine. I tell you, the last person I did that with was, was Frank Black. Uh, A.K.A. Black Francis, lead singer of the Pixies, and I went up to him at a, a, a gig after a gig of his, and um, he, you know I've met him a couple of times before, so I know him to say hello to, but I was really nervous for some reason, and I was a bit wasted, and I had a hat in my bag, like a baseball cap, and I'd sewn the word, I'd, I'd, I'd got it at a, a this shop. This is already sounding mental. Yeah. And it, it had the word it had the word boring on it, right? Oh, God. And it's too long a story to tell like why it had the word boring on the front. Well, probably because you wanted to be interesting. Yeah, I don't, it was it was it was for a, a thing we were going to do in Japan. Right. And I got it in Japan anyway. I had it in my bag, and I was just so m wasted. I just wanted to give him something, and I gave him the boring hat. And I said, "Look, this is for you. You can wear it when you're doing interviews." Well, he probably took that the wrong way, didn't he, and thought that you thought that he was boring. Well, exactly, but I th I kind of meant it to be like, you know, interviews, eh? Aren't they rubbish that you hate doing them? Here's a hat to make you kind of... Oh, oh dear, I didn't think oh. it's. I think you shouldn't go to the premiere. Maybe I should Stay away from Shaun of the Dead. Just watch it on video. Fair enough, then. Yeah? Okay. Let's have some Foo Fighters. <laughs>
That was the Foo Fighters with Learn to Fly. This is Adam and Joe on XFM all the way through till three. I say all the way, it's only about an hour and a half now. Uh, so, you know, um, there's all sorts of good stuff coming up in the show. We've got Celebrity Regression coming up soon, haven't we, Ed? Yeah, that's right, later this hour. It I will be regressed live on air by Joe, who is unqualified to perform regressions. And it will be up to you, the listening public, to phone in and uh, guess who the celebrity wow. I have been regressed into A is. hypnotic regression. And we want, we want you to guess what the films are as well because I will be regressed and I will actually be living out the characters that I have portrayed wow. in these films wow. so not only do you have to guess which actor I yeah, am yeah. you have to guess what those films are and well. what is it a tough one Adam this week I would say that it's quite an easy one but quite tough quite tough That's contra it's a co I'm getting contradictory signals from you Adam it's tough but yeah it's easy I would say in that case yes it's easy it's easy yeah Oh, I'm starting to speak micro now. Speaking of adverts, yes, uh, this post office one for the post office. They're, oh, they're the... delivering cardboard words to each other, right? Is that with the, with the Travis track on it? Possibly. Is it Travis? I didn't know that. Love will come through. It's love will come. Have, 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 Trav have you spoken to Travis about that? Haven't. No. Do you think they've approved that? Yes. Yeah, they have yeah. to approve everything. They support like the post office. It's it's a sort of old British institution, isn't it? That should be supported. It's under threat by the technology of email and Blueberry and all that sort of thing. Well, Blue Blueberry is a handheld email device, Adam. Is it? <laughs> Revealing itself to be uh, living in the past there. But Blueberry, yeah, it's a handheld email device. It's threatening the uh, the monopoly of the post office. So anyway, they've got this new campaign, uh, which shows. Very cuddly looking postman, right? In difficult weather situations, delivering actual words to people. And what do you remember what sort of words they're delivering? It's stuff stuff like happiness and you know, gift. Right. And <clears throat> not frot. It's it's not words like frot. It's not words like letter bomb. <laughs> yeah. They've avoided letter or bomb. Anthrax. They've avoided anthrax. They've avoided just the word hate. <laughs> yeah. Hate mail. Hate oh, mail. Oh. oh, that's not very nice. Or junk. Uh huh. You know, or oh, yeah, bills. I just thought it would be a more. Uh, this is my point. I think it would be a better, a more realistic advert for the post office if they had some words that represented the rubbish that you do actually get through your door, which yes. isn't necessarily letter bombs, anthrax, and hate mail, unless you know you're a neo-Nazi. However, or it is terrorist. pizza, pizza. Well, they don't tend to post though. Well, they post them, but the Royal Mail don't post them, do they? Not. I'm not saying actual pizzas, but you know, like leaflets for pizza delivery companies. Like sample of Tilda Rizaz. Hey, did you get some of that? <laughs> yeah. Why didn't they have? Why didn't they carry a big the word sample of Tilda Rizaz? How come you got some of that? I thought it was just me because I'm because we shop the... at Sainsbury's oh, and okay. we've got nectar cards. Right. So listen, if you don't have a nectar card and you don't shop at Sainsbury's, let us explain. We got like a package. It was so exciting. It was in a jiffy bag and everything. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I don't often a get a free sample of Tilda Rizaz. And it was really heavy. And I thought, what's this? Someone sent me an exciting thing. I can't believe it. And it was, uh, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was like a, a bag of rice basically from from Sainsbury's Tilda Rizaz. And um, sounds I, like someone's name, doesn't it? And it was quite a lot. That was it was about four portions worth. I think she uh, is on reception at my dentist. Tilda Rizaz. Yeah. Is she nice? She's spicy. Oh. Anyway, I ate it. Did you eat yours? I didn't eat mine, no. Did you chuck it away? No, it's been thrown around. I try and give it to everybody who comes around. <laughs> and it went in the bin. You should eat it, man. It's delicious. Yeah. You can't waste rice. I wonder if there's an advert for Tilda Rizaz in this ad break. Hey, yeah, let's find out. <laughs> Snow Patrol there with Run. Are you a fan of Snow Patrol, Adam? Uh, yeah. I, they're, they're pretty inoffensive, aren't they? They're nice, mm. I think. It's mm. got it's terrible album cover. What's the cover? Uh, it's like two people, sort of, a uh, man and a woman. Uh, Sounds good so far. Dress oh. But it's just very lazy Photoshop job. Uh, anyway, it's very nondescript. And you think, wow, this is a big band with a big album, you know. Could they not have pulled out the stops a bit more on the um, album cover? Disappointing album cover design, but hey, let's not judge an album by the cover, Adam. Well, exactly, because you know? it's, uh, cause it's great stuff, as you just heard. Yeah, okay. Now, we've both been uh, watching the same film recently, haven't we, Adam? Adam and I both have... Um, problems. Problems. We've both got multi-region DVD players and a small amount of disposable income. So, like many of you out there, 
you know, we get American films on DVD and watch them. And sometimes we find ourselves wasting money on movies that we really shouldn't be buying. Really bad movies. And, and, and to add insult to injury... In oh, you didn't buy that, did you? In Let's talk about that later. Okay. Uh, to add insult to injury, we often find ourselves both paying about 30 quid <laughs> for the same rubbish film, even though we live two streets away from each other. Could perfectly easily just uh, swap one copy.